Thanks, Goose. Since the dawn of civilization, humans have spent their existence exploring and conquering the Earth. You all certainly seem to like it. Yes, Darren, it is what we do, and undoubtedly the best game to do that in is Civilization VI, the latest in the long-running and complex strategy game about world domination. You're plotting a new course again, aren't you? The currents before us are ever-changing. We must adapt and press forward if we are to see our journey's end. And how will we know when we get there? If you've never played a Civilization game before, it's basically a turn-based empire simulator. You pick a world leader from history, then sit back and try to be the best Civilization on Earth. And there are a few ways to win. You can have the most culture and tourism by building world wonders or having great people. There's also a religious victory if you convert the whole world to follow your religion. Or a science victory if you manage to get out into outer space. And of course there's domination where you go to war and conquer. <laughs> uh, yes, war never changes, Darren. I spent most of my first playthrough at war with England. We are not amused. Hey, they started it! As our protests are in vain, we hereby declare war. And while it is very tempting to attack and conquer all of your neighbours, like everything else in this game, your actions will have deep and far-reaching consequences. That's right. If you wage war too much, other civilizations will label you a warmonger, which makes it trickier to deal with them diplomatically. And it can really set your civilization back. Although, one of the new features in Civ 6 is the Casus Belli system, where you can justify going to war in certain situations. This can mean less of a warmonger penalty if you're forced into conflict or if you have a good reason to start a war. Yes, in fact, there are quite a few new features and changes, which is actually a big deal, because the last game, Civilization V, was near perfect, and it got more perfect with every single update. The biggest change is districts. Now, as you plan out your city, you physically place certain buildings on tiles on the map. It sounds like a simple addition, but it actually makes your decisions much more permanent and trickier. You give up land and resources to place a district, but once it's down, it's down for good. The purpose of districts, and many other changes in the game, is to make you focus more on each particular city and its purpose. It's about specialising more and cloning less. Yes, I think you're right, Darren. In other civilization games, I found I would always just make the same city over and over again. So I think this is to stop ICS, or Infinite City Spread, where you do just clone the same city. Now, to be successful, I think you really do have to focus and specialise with every single city you build. There's a lot to think about, and it can be quite daunting at first. Well, that's true, Bajo, but there are a lot of guides online, and really the easiest way to learn is to just play on some of the easier difficulties and try things out. It's actually a very easy game to play, it's just difficult to master. Ooh, I was impressed with the new visual design. The game looks and feels a bit more like a board game now. You even place cards down for bonuses, and the way units move about and fight is quite pleasing to the ocular circuits. I did have some trouble with rogue barbarians, though. Here I was building my civilization in peace, and those ruffians kept storming into my cities. Yes, you really do have to watch out for those barbarians now. Yeah, they're so mean. And if you ignore them, they just keep building more and more advanced units. They're a much bigger part of the game now. Gotta squish them quick. Oh, I also liked how the leaders now have their own distinct personalities. In previous games, they all played the same, but now they play more in accordance with their own idiosyncrasies. <laughs> I quite liked Teddy Roosevelt myself. What a fabulous moustache! <laughs> yes, technically the leader AI hasn't actually improved much, but all their little hidden agendas and idiosyncrasies make them much more interesting to play against now. This is a fantastic sequel with endless depth. I'm giving it four out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, I agree, Bajo. We haven't even gone deep into the multiplayer yet. This is a whole other game when you're playing against real humans. I'm giving it four out of five as well.